If you want to easily create Android apps, then MIT have got a thing called App Inventor. And iOS is going to be available in the new year. So at the time of writing and recording this in 2018, it's coming soon. But right now, Android works great. This is my simple app. I've got a list picker, a text box, and a button. So the list picker will be a drop down list. The text box is first to type into and then a button to trigger sending of this message. So we're going to create a message as the name suggests, Bluetooth messages. And we're going to send it via Bluetooth, which is this Bluetooth component here, to our Arduino. And you find the Bluetooth down here in connectivity and we're using the client. And then in blocks, it's a lot like Scratch or the uh, code in Tinkercad. We say when the list picker before picking, so essentially when the app opens, we set the list elements to the list of Bluetooth addresses that we get back from the Bluetooth client. And then when a selection is made, we select the Bluetooth address from the list picker as our Bluetooth connection. And then we set the list picker text to Bluetooth connected as a literal string. When the button's clicked, we do send text from the Bluetooth client using the message text from the text box. And then we add a new line. I don't know if that's necessary, um, but it seems to work better with it. On the Arduino side, we have uh, modified the HC06, HC08 script from before, the sketch from before. Now, I'm not expecting everybody to go out and get an Adafruit matrix, but the principle is the same no matter what you're sending the information to. And later in this video, we'll show a toggle button for toggling the LED so you can see it's just an extension of what we did before. So we've got that toggle LED before. We've moved the RX and TX pins just to make space for this matrix because it uses four pins. And we're using software serial again. And this is the library Adafruit created for this LED matrix. And we're using two, three, four, and five for communicating with that matrix. And I have two panels for my matrix. And then for scrolling the message, we create a little set of values here for storing those. And that actually, because I'm using a big font, should be times 16. We set the start message to starting, just so we know it's booted up. We begin the matrix using the settings that they've got here. Set the text size to the bigger font. So text size one would be eight, uh, eight pixels, and this would be six, 16 pixels. Uh, we set the brightness to quite dark, because otherwise it would be hurting my eyes testing. We clear the matrix. We don't want text wrap because we're going to scroll it. And we set the little toggle LED to output. We start the serial. We start the Bluetooth. I have a little welcome message here reminding us to use new line and carriage return. And this is the scrolling text routine. So while the message is still on screen, keep moving it left. And the X coordinate is a pixel. So it's a 24 pixel wide panel, but we've got two panels, so that's 48. It has to essentially move past. And then we've got a tiny delay, so just enough that it doesn't really blink too much, uh, flicker too much. The matrix width is returned by the object to tell you how many pixels you've got, and I add 24 to it, just to add a bit of a gap. 
and then we get the Bluetooth input from a function we've got down here and essentially all it's doing is looking at the serial and if the character is an asterisk then we need to toggle the LED and we're looking for a new line and as we go along we're adding to the string to build up a message one character at a time so in theory the last character will be a new line and then we send it back by doing return and obviously we have to echo whatever is on the regular serial as well to set the message we just set the global variables above but each character is going to be 16 pixels wide so we multiply the length of the string by 16 to set how wide it should be to wrap then we're not clipping the message or scrolling too early so each time it goes through the loop it needs to get the Bluetooth input see if there's been a new message and it sets that message to whatever we've got back now how do you get it onto your phone well there is an emulator but that emulator doesn't seem to want to work with Bluetooth on my Mac so what I do is I save the APK to my computer that's a Java app that we can then use the file transfer to get it onto the Android and while that's downloading I'll show you I simply copied it into my there I copied it into my download folder and then I'll show you on the Android we simply find that in our download folder open it up install it and then we can run it Yes. <laughs> 